welcome back, guys. Matt with Not an Operator here, um, talking about the Arsenal SLR 104UR. So I have wanted one of these rifles ever since I saw Pierce Brosnan riding down the, the streets of Moscow in a tank carrying a crink. So we call them a crink here in the U.S. I don't really know where that came from. Uh, you ask anybody else and they're not going to call it that. But uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to call this a crink for the rest of the video because I really don't want to have to rattle off this whole long name. Um, so backstory on this, this came to me as a 16 inch long uh, barreled rifle um, on the ATF, which they still are, but the ATF is doing their e-forms and I got this back in 24 hours since prints arrived. So when I sent the prints out, as soon as they arrived at the ATF, 24 hours later, this was approved, which is freaking great. Um, sent this out to Barry at Bat Arms down in Plano, Texas, and he had the barrel chopped, recrowned, gas system all gone through and uh, it's running great. So we're gonna go through uh, what I've done to this so far, um, do some shooting with it, and uh, we're also gonna talk about the Definitive Arms fighter break um, that I put on here as well. So a lot of people like to put the, um, kind of the cone, the flash, I don't even know if that's flash hider, yeah, I guess flash hider, the cone on the front, um, the booster, I guess they would call it, and I like the look of the booster, but the booster is, you know, a little bit longer than what this is right here. I like the look, um, you know, I like the fact that it's a flash hider, not necessarily just, you know, a, a linear compensator type thing, like the four pieces, and I guess the booster kind of is. So with the booster, you get a massive muzzle flash, uh, which is just, it's kind of annoying. I mean, it's really cool looking, but it's kind of annoying. So went with this. Um, this is the Gen 1 from Definitive Arms. They do have a Gen 2 now. Uh, I have not seen that or I have not used that yet. Um, so we're just going to go over the Gen 1 for right now. So let's go through this um, front to back or back to front and we'll talk about all the features on it. So you start out with Arsenal's uh, folding stock. So this does fold. Uh, it won't fold right now because I have the RS Regulate mount on there. But this does fold down, as you can see, very, very small package. Um, you know, awesome, awesome gun with the ability for that to fold. So you can throw a, a triangle folder on here, um, and I believe they're making, there's a couple other um, stocks you can throw out there, but typically you see the, the Arsenal stock, polymer stock here, or the triangle stock. So on a typical crank, you know, you'd have the triangle folder, you'd have the, the wood um, hand guards, and then you'd have the booster on the front of that as well. I really like this setup right now. Uh, you know, the Arsenal um, stock right here gives a great cheek weld. Um, it's very comfortable to shoot. Granted, this almost has no recoil, which is which is awesome in itself. But uh, I really like the ability, you know, for for this to fold as well as having the cleaning kit in the butt stock as well. So kind of a cool cool little feature there. Uh, moving forward, so I did end up putting a ALG Lightning Bow trigger in this and. Uh, you know, the trigger pull and reset on this thing is absolutely incredible. We're gonna go go ahead and look at it real quick. Ready? I mean, that reset is, is next to nothing. So I put one of those in my mini Draco as well, SBR, and they are absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I've had no issues with these whatsoever. So I'm gonna continue to use them. Uh, moving forward, I put the RS Regulate AK302 rear biased mount um, for this. You know, I, originally I had I had looked at a uh, Picatinny mount that you can you can drill into the top cover and I did drill it into the top cover and I screwed it up. So I did my own at home gunsmithing and butchered it completely. So I had a buddy weld up the holes that were on there, painted them, no worse for the wear and uh, try not to save yourself money and go get a professional to do it because I am not that. So, uh, on top of that, I have the HS503C Circle Dot. Um, absolutely love these from Holosan. Again, let's see if I can see in there. Can you? I can't really see it. All right, that's a terrible picture. Anyway, so it's basically the EOTech reticle, um, you know, circle with the dot in the middle of it. But uh, sighted this in at 100 yards today. Runs great, hit true every single time, no issues whatsoever. The great thing on the RS Regulate mount is that you can remove it and it'll keep your zero. So you take it off, you shoot with irons if you want. Later on you want to come back in, slide it back on, you will still have zero, still stay true, um, which is awesome. 
So we'll go through the internals here real quick as well. Uh, this is a hinged top cover as well, just like this. So then to take out the spring, like a normal AK, remove that, remove the bolt and the bolt carrier group. And then if you wanna take off the uh, top hand guard, actually, because this is hinged, unlike a normal AK where you have the, the little switch down here, uh, the hinge actually pulls the hand guard retainer out. So you can, as soon as you open that, you can just pull the, the gas tube right out. Um, this is, these will work with, or the, uh, the furniture is crank furniture, so it's, it's smaller than a normal uh, AK. But uh, like I said, I put the Arsenal 104 UR trigger in here. Uh, no modifications whatsoever. Um, it worked perfectly in here the first time, and I ended up putting a retaining plate in here as well instead of the uh, shepherd's hook. So put that back in, and then we'll move forward. <clears throat> All right, so hinge top cover, which is awesome. Uh, and this is, it's a very solid, if you, if you do want to put a Picatinny mount on top here in the 1913 rail, um, you know, that'll stay, that'll stay relatively zero as well. Um, you know, not as good as the RS Regulate, but you know, it'll, if that's what you want to do, you can do that. So take that on there. Moving forward to the, the last piece I want to talk about today, and I'll show you some video of this shooting, of me shooting this today as well. Um, but the Definitive Arms uh, Fighter Break. 24 millimeter for uh, AK-74. So, as you can see at the top, the top is ported, and then you have the flash hider portion on the front as well, um, and then the detent. So the detent on this sits a little bit cockeyed. Um, I don't find that as being an issue. I may end up having it welded uh, in place so it sits straight up. But with this on there, um, this mitigates recoil a lot. So as you can see um, between the two, you know, this is the sh the shots right now are with um, the Definitive Arms Fighter Break, and then right now you can see without any break whatsoever. And again, with a booster, you get a lot larger, um, a lot larger flash signature as well as more recoil. So this does a great, great, great job of mitigating recoil. You know, I you can put two rounds very quickly on target um, with minimal muzzle rise which is great. And the ports on that do a, do a really great job of uh, keeping that muzzle down. So uh, overall, you know, I, I really, really like this rifle. Um, you know, starting out, I was shooting, I was shooting it and I was having a lot of failure to feed. Um, come to find out, it was a break-in period. I shot about 200 rounds and uh, it's been flawless ever since. So uh, that was a little, a little annoying considering you know how much money I spent on this thing and uh, and you know how much or how yeah I guess how much money I spent on this I mean I probably thirteen hundred dollar rifle not including the uh, conversion and the tax stamp and everything else so you know right out of the box I expect this to run um, but started running fine no issues now which is great um, the five four five round so on my mini Draco I have a uh, a four piece booster Bulgarian brake on the front um, and it's very difficult to keep the muzzle down with the um, 762 by 39 round and have the same or have the rounds hit in the same place very very quickly with the 545 on the other hand this has almost no recoil um, and it, it hits flat and it, or it shoots flat and it hits it hits pretty good so I'm a big fan uh, this is my first 545 rifle, 74, AK-74. Um, and I will probably pick it up another one, to be honest with you. I love my Mini Draco. It was my first SBR. Um, you know, the, uh, the 762 by 39 rounds, you can get 1,000 rounds for like 180 bucks, 200 bucks. You're looking at about 1,000 rounds. This is, um, again, 545. But this is uh, about 125 bucks. I picked up uh, 1080 rounds for it. So not much, not much more. Um, but they run great. So, so I'm gonna keep running this. Uh, I'll actually be shooting this in red October uh, for Circle 10 AK this year. So uh, if you guys see any videos of that, I'll be doing videos on that too. But uh, that'll be shoot. That'll be shot up in that match. 
Um, so let me know what you guys want to see next. Um, I think we're going to be doing one full review, run full review on the Scorpion, um, and we're going to compare multiple different nine millimeter PCCs uh, with that as well. So I think we've got a an AR9, um, the AKV, obviously the Scorpion, and then probably a Ruger. Uh, we're just going to compare those four and see see what we like, what we don't like about each of those. So anyway, check back in, subscribe if you can, and I will see you guys next time.